You can increase your intelligence by purchasing the intelligence implant as soon as you start the game and leave Doc Mitchell's house. And in this video, I will show you a safe path to the clinic using no exploits. Hi, I'm Mo and I'm trapped in Fallout. As soon as you start the game, the first thing you want to do in order to actually purchase the intelligence implant is to make sure that you actually don't have your intelligence set to 10. So when you are going through and sort of setting all your special points, what you want to do is set your intelligence to a maximum of nine. So what I will do is just go ahead and set my intelligence to a maximum of nine. And any remaining points really is up to you. But what I would do is put one into endurance simply because the number of endurance points you have determines the number of implants that you can buy. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in endurance. The next thing you want to do is simply go ahead and just leave Doc Mitchell's house. Once you've actually left Doc Mitchell's house, from here, what we want to do is turn right and go into the Good Springs School. And once inside the school, what we will do is go ahead and open the safe that's inside the school, simply because it will contain one stealth boy and there will be some steam packs and a super steam pack also. Now, the stealth boy would definitely come in handy in a moment and the steam packs you're getting mainly because just in case you need them, really. So once inside, just go ahead and open the safe. And once you open the safe from here, just go ahead and take the stealth boy, the super steam pack and so on. Now go ahead and exit the school. And from here, we're going to take a really long path all the way to first Camp McCarran. And from Camp McCarran, we will take a sewer system all the way to the medical clinic. So what we will do is sort of track it out on the map first. So let's go ahead and open the map and from here. What we will do is sort of track it here. So the clinic itself is around here. And what we will do is sort of travel north and get to around here. And from here, uh, we are going to basically just go above a Great Khan uh, location. And from there, we're going to head east and then sort of follow the road until we get to Camp McCarran. And from Camp McCarran, we will take some underground tunnels all the way to the clinic itself. So this is going to be a rather long journey. And what I will do is just take this one long road without any edits. And I will try my best to somewhat keep you entertained because there will be a lot of walking involved. Um, and what I will do is simply try to sort of warn you of particular enemies or issues that you might encounter on this route. So while we're doing this, it might be worth for you to go ahead and hot key any steam packs that you have as well as the stealth boy. But again, at the same time, we don't need to We'll use them when we approach that right time. So as you sort of take this road out, you will probably know that beyond that sign over there are a number of castle doors. So we're not going to take this road. Instead, what we're going to do is when you see this keep out sign from here, just look to your left. So west and go straight up this hill. And as we go up this hill, we will sort of avoid a lot of the castle doors. So continue to go up this hill and you will then see this sort of two trees. Now, when you do get to this area, you will be given the option to finish your character rebuild. Just go ahead and say finished. So from here, when you see these two trees from here, what you want to do is head right. So now you should be sort of heading northeast. So go ahead and head in this general direction. And from here, we're more or less going to head sort of north, northeast until we see that Great Khan's campsite. Now, again, all the castle doors are pretty much right there um, on the other side of that hill. So. This is why we're sort of using this pathway to try and avoid all those castle doors. Right now, once you get here, this is a pretty important bit. Make sure you don't jump here. The height here is actually great enough to either cripple a limb or probably outright kill you. So try and sort of shimmy your way down instead. And we want to do exactly the same thing here. So when you get here, don't jump down. But if you look down, that's sort of the camp I was referring to. And there's a lot of castle doors here. So from here, what we will do is sort of hug the ledge on this side. And when you sort of see this uh, vegetation growing out of the ground from here, what we will do is sort of jump down and then go through that crevice over there. And you're going to have to be rather relatively quick about it. Now, if you're unlucky, this is where your stim packs will come in handy. But what I found is if you just sort of more or less run for it, uh, the Casados will chase you. 
But if you jump, there is a chance that you might just outright avoid them. Now, keep on jumping. The Casados probably will be following me. And in this case, I think I got a bit lucky. I did get one hit off them. But for the most part, that was it. So if you time that bit right, you should be fine. Now, when you get to this area from here, effectively, we can just go straight right across this uh, opening here. But there are a few enemies here also. So we, we don't want to do that. What we will do is sort of hug the sort of cliff on the left hand side. And we're just going to follow this path over here. Now, as we're following this path, there will be more enemies to your right, sort of in this uh, er inside the picketed fence area, and they're mostly sort of grasshoppers and sort of all of that nature. So again, it shouldn't be an issue to you. Now, you can avoid them, or you can try to avoid them by sort of hugging the pond or the sort of the the, the side of the pond where it sort of meets uh, the ground. So just sort of hug this bit, and you should end up avoiding most of the enemies. Once you get here, from here, what you want to do is now simply look to your east. And now we can sort of go down that area that we sort of saw while we sort of came out of that opening over there. So what we'll do now is just sort of go this way. Now, again, there are enemies here. A common enemy in this particular area or just beyond this area are uh, fire geckos. So again, do be careful. Now you have noticed that my health is pretty much down from those two hits, but for the most part, I should be okay. So if your health is down, it is worth you using a steam pack just in case you encounter the odd enemy uh, that you're not able to outrun. But for the most part, it should be good. So in this instance, right here, what I will do is just quickly use a steam pack to get my health back up again. And that should do it. Okay, so now that we sort of made it to this area, we're actually almost halfway there. Um, believe it or not, we haven't yet approached the most dangerous area yet. The castle doors was more or less the easy bit. From here, you can just sort of go straight up the hill and across that way. But again, if you sort of see on the horizon all those broken down buildings, that is key fiend territory you really don't want to go down that way um, there are a lot of dangers in that area but luckily that is why we got that stealth boy that one single stealth boy for the most part should help us to uh, dodge a lot of these fiend enemies so once you sort of make it to this rough area what you want to do is go ahead and actually use a stealth boy so what i tend to do is when i sort of walk between these two rocks although this isn't the exact area but sort of close enough Go ahead and use the stealth boy. So I will use it roughly here. From here, make sure that you hug this sort of cliff on the left hand side and you should be lucky enough to avoid pretty much almost all the fiends. Now, the thing with the stealth boy is enemies can still see you. They can still catch you out. But what the stealth boy does is it aids you in sort of long distance stealth. So if I just walk up to a fiend, they will probably see me, especially on level one. Um, but if I'm far away, so you see the fiend over there, um, it looks like they may have spotted me. But anyway, for the most part, I should be fine. Now, once you pass that cliff area, what you want to do is now use these broken down containers as defense on the off chance if a fiend sees you. So again, when I'm carrying down this particular buff, so we're heading east now, there are still fiends on the other side, but we're going to use these particular crates as defense on the off chance. If they do see us and they sort of fire at us or throw grenades, they should shield us for the most part. Now, the next bit we're going to have to uh, travel through is a somewhat small minefield. Now, if you just go sort of straight down this way, then you will encounter a lot of mines and that's definitely not something we want to do what you want to do instead is don't go through that way but go through this gap over here and if you go through this gap over here and you do it right you would only need to defuse one single mine again at level one this mine would probably take you out if you're not too careful so the mine should be roughly around here somewhere it could be hidden by the bush so do be careful 
Should be here, roughly somewhere. That was it. So unfortunately, I, I mistimed it, but luckily it only managed to take both my arms out, which is something I don't really need for this particular run. Now, once you make it up this area, you're almost halfway there now. We should now be right in front of Camp McCarran. Now go ahead and make sure that you discover Camp McCarran, as it will act as somewhat of a checkpoint for you a bit later on. But once you've actually approached McCarran, what you want to do is go into this manhole right over here. Now once inside, what you want to do is just sort of follow the tunnel through. Now this tunnel will also have some enemies. There are chances of rats and ghouls, but again, you should be able to outrun almost all of them. So just follow the tunnel. When you get to this area, what you want to do is take the first right you see, so right over here. And as you enter this area, what you want to do is head northeast or east. Now again, as you saw, there are rats and ghouls, but you will be able to outrun them all. Uh, luckily, they can't run faster than you. They run pretty much at the same pace that you do. So as long as you're able to get just a little bit ahead of them, it shouldn't be an issue anymore. In fact, if I look back, then they are all chasing me, but they're not fast enough to actually catch me. So go ahead and then just go ahead and exit the tunnel using this exit over here. So once you exit this area, again, in this particular area, there is a chance of fiend enemies spawning. In my instance, I got a bit lucky, so they didn't spawn. So what you want to do is head northwest and we want to go into here. So this is sort of the Crimson Caravan area. So again, follow this path and head north, and then you should see the entrance to the Crimson Caravan. Just go ahead and go inside. Once inside, what you want to do is just exit through the other exit in this caravan area. So just go straight. And do take stock of this area as well, because there are some vendors here that you can use, but again, that's for a little bit later in the video. So go ahead and exit. And once you exit, if you look immediately in front of you to your left, you will see the New Vegas Medical Clinic. And with that, congratulations, you pretty much made it to the clinic, uh, pretty much at level one. Once inside, what you want to do is just look to your right and you should see the good doctor. Go ahead and speak to her. Welcome to the New Vegas Medical Clinic. Go ahead and select the first option. What kind of implants do you have available? I have several basic. Go ahead and select the I want to buy an implant option. One other thing I forgot to mention. And then go ahead and select I want to be more intelligent. For 4,000 caps, I can inst- And this is where you will need 4,000 caps to go ahead and buy the intelligence implant. Now in this video, this was all about just trying to get you to the location. It wasn't about trying to gather the caps. I wanted to keep this video as short as I could whilst giving you a very clear and easy to follow path to her at level one as soon as you leave Doc Mitchell's house. Increasing your intelligence will certainly help you to build a far stronger character. However, as said, you will need those 4,000 caps. If you want to know how to get unlimited caps in Fallout New Vegas, then click on the video you see on the screen now.